I wear two hearing aids, without them, I would be very lost. It makes an experience more challenging in a way. It's something that does make me feel sad. And people have made assumptions that I have ignored them, been, been rude because they think I've been ignorant, when the truth is I just genuinely didn't hear them. I'm deeply grateful for the hearing that I do have. Hey to my lovely YouTube family, I am swapping a weekly vlog for a chatty video. So I asked you what kind of chatty videos you would like me to create and talking about my hearing loss was one of the things that came up and it's something that I get asked quite a bit, it's something that I get asked in real life as well and something that I am more than happy to talk about. I did speak about it quite a bit when I was on Instagram but it's not anything that I've created on YouTube. And of course, here on YouTube, when I create vlogs and things, there'll be times when you see my hearing aids quite a lot. I have got my hearing aids in right now. Um, sometimes you can't see, sometimes you can't tell, but they are in. And I wear two hearing aids and without them, I would be very lost. I'm more than happy to talk about my hearing loss as it's a huge part of who I am. And it's something that I am not ashamed about, I'm not embarrassed about it. Now, once upon a time, many, many years ago, it was something that I did feel very self-conscious about. And so I hope that this video might even just then reach people that also are journeying through a hearing loss and can maybe feel a little bit alone with it or on, are on a different part of their journey as well. So yeah, hoping that it can just maybe reach people in that way, but then also just like raise awareness around it. I know when I've spoken about it before in the past, people have been like, wow, I didn't realize that then I will be more conscious of, of doing certain things and just, just things to like look, look, uh, look out for, I guess. So let's go back to the start of my hearing loss journey. So when I was born, they didn't do hearing tests the same as I guess what they do now. So it never got detected that I had a hearing loss when I was born. It wasn't until I got to school and had my first hearing test at school that I then failed it and I then got referred to have further tests done. Then having those further tests, it then got discovered that I have then a moderate hearing loss in both ears and from then, that is then when I started wearing hearing aids. And I had no, no problems with wearing it. I was very happy to wear it. And this is like very early in, in my school life. And there were things that had to be put in place in the classroom. I would always then sit near the front. And yeah, I, those, those then like th th things were put in place, like strategies to be able to then help me. But then having the hearing aid, and also then just being like closer to the front when the teacher was talking or, you know, I'd be sat near the front as well. My friends were always so wonderful. Like they knew that then I had this hearing loss, would always make sure they were looking at me when, um, when they were talking. And we're just more understanding that if we were outside playing in the playground and they were shouting me, they would know that I wouldn't be able to hear them. And so in terms of growing up then through school, I was very fortunate that I, you know, wasn't bullied at all. People were always just so lovely and understanding and, and just very respectful. It wasn't until then I got older and then just like naturally started to get more self-conscious. I think it might have been like around the time I went to say secondary school. And it was just, again, it was no result of being like picked on or anything like that. Just, just me feeling very self-conscious about it. They were a lot more noticeable than the hearing aids that I have now. And the molds were like in, in my ears so you could see them. And I just then didn't wear them and would actually then struggle with, with, with not wearing them. But at that point, my hearing loss wasn't as bad as what it is now and I could still get by. I wasn't thriving, but I could get by without wearing my hearing aid. At that point, I can't remember whether it was then when I had to wear two or one. As then naturally, as I've got older, and as naturally as anybody gets older, our hearing loss, our hearing begins to deteriorate, to deteriorate, to deteriorate. Mine, however, has kind of like had that head start. So as I then got older and my hearing then got worse, then definitely had to then start wearing two hearing aids. And I just couldn't then kind of get away with not wearing it. And 
you know, I think from that decision, I just kind of was just wore them and it was fine. Everything was fine with wearing them. Now though, would very much struggle to get by without wearing them. In fact, I, it's just something that I can't do. I would never leave the house without wearing them. I wouldn't be able to hear people. I wouldn't be able to have a conversation with people and would just very much struggle to live everyday life without, without them. Naturally, there are environments that I struggle in and then naturally environments that I'm, I thrive in. And if you kind of think of then a noisy environment is somewhere that I would struggle because my hearing aids just then amplify the noise levels and it just makes it really hard to then pick out conversation. So if I'm in a noisy environment, trying to have a conversation with someone, it's really challenging and very hard to then try and focus on what someone is saying. So I naturally tend to avoid environments like that, but it kind of suits my personality anyway. I'm much more suited to calmer and quiet, quieter environments anyway. I find also if say if I go outside and it's a windy day that's quite challenging because the hearing aids will then pick up the wind so I'm trying to think of how to probably imagine if like with a microphone if someone then blew into a microphone that's the kind of noise that then I'd get with it with the hearing aids as well and if you actually then tap the microphone at the back of the hearing aid it actually makes that kind of noise if you had a microphone you could tap 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 it that's what it sounds like when I used to teach in school, the children would sometimes like, we look, I could just see that they'd just start looking at my hearing aids and they'd come behind and they'd just like tap. <laughs> and I'd be like, that's, that's, that's the microphone on the hearing aid. Yeah, so, um, but that's right at the back. And so it then always picks up things more, more from that way. Also, even if my hair goes on the microphone, it rustles. So you can hear things like that. If I have any insects fly nearby, like a bee, the buzzing is very, very, very loud. So it actually feels like I've got then a bee in my ear. So I'll often, things then will make me jump <laughs> quite easily. I also struggle in cars. So if I am sat in the back, because I'll only see the back of people's heads, I struggle to make out what they're saying. So I can make out that someone is then trying to have a conversation. So I can hear that my, my ears will pick up that obviously someone is saying something, but the clarity isn't there and I can't always make out. It also depends on who is speaking. So if someone is speaking who speaks very softly, I will struggle. If someone speaks loud and very clear and emphasized, then I will, it will be easier for me to, to make out what they are saying. So usually again, like people that know me, like they'll make sure they're turning around. Or if I'm sat in the back and I can see in the in the mirror, I can then see what someone's saying. So I can then make out through lip reading. I massively rely then on lip reading when I'm having a conversation with anybody. So that's when people, um, again, like people who know me will know that they need to be, if they're talking to me, they need to be like near, nearby so I can make out like what they're saying by the lip reading. If someone is in another room, or even the other end of the room and try to talk to me, then I, again, will make out they're trying to say something, but I can't make out what it is. And yeah, it's, they're just things that I just have to then articulate to people that they're the things that I then need help with in order to hear. The confidence is something that took a while to come. I didn't feel very confident growing up to say to people like, oh, can you just, say that again when I'm looking at you or because I, I'm hard of hearing and I, I lip read or, you know, just saying to people like, oh, I can't hear you when, you, when you're in the other room, like I'm, I'm deaf. And so it took a while to get that confidence. And so again, I used to just kind of just get by, I just used to struggle. And there would be times when I would ask pardon if I didn't hear clearly the first time, but then I used to feel awkward if I had to ask pardon again. So sometimes I would just nod along or say yes to something that made no sense for you saying yes to. And you can just see people are like, she's not heard that. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's again, just come with confidence than me, than me being able to articulate that. So if you do know anybody with a hearing loss, just making sure that you are then speaking to them face on so that they can lip read, so that they can see your expressions and you know, again, just by by looking at them, they'll be able to pick it up so much more and it'll be a lot clearer. Also, just making sure that you're not talking to someone from behind because then again, like talking from behind, you can't pick, pick it up the same. 
when I go to bed at night, that is when I take my hormones out. I don't sleep in them. In fact, any time like I will lay down on the side, then I will take one out because if you lay where on the, where the hearing aid is, it then whistles and yeah, it's not nice having them. It's not relaxing, is it, to have a whistling sound in your ear? So I take my hearing aids out when I go to bed at night. I do struggle to hear my alarm. It does take a few times for the alarm to go off before then I will hear it. I normally then am woken up because my husband will be just like nudging me to say your alarm has been going off. And so yeah, that's that's one thing that I do struggle with. If I am working away and I am on my own, then I'll always then put an alarm on my iPad as well. So I then have a backup alarm and the people that I then am away with say or say if I'm working away they are aware that of my hearing loss so and, and also like I'm I, it's important to me that I'm on time for things like that's part of my personality and my identity and who I am so if I wasn't on time for something then they will probably think she's not heard her alarm <laughs> but it hasn't happened yet so that's good I rely on subtitles I would be very lost without subtitles and growing up when I used to watch then videos you didn't have subtitles on videos it's not until then I've re-watched things as I've got older and I'm like oh that makes sense now or recognize that I have been singing the wrong words to so many Disney songs for so many years <laughs> because I just I think when you're younger as well you don't really like question what it is that you're singing either do you but um but yeah that subtitles have been amazing. Another thing that I'm very grateful for in terms of technology is when texting came in. So I used to get very anxious about answering the phone because sometimes some people's phone lines would be really quiet, some people would talk so quiet on the phone, and also you can't see people, so I couldn't lip read when I was on the phone. So then when texting came in, oh, I can remember just feeling so much more relaxed. I have never been someone that spent hours on the phone growing up and in fact it wasn't really texting it was more msn oh those are the days and they i was just very grateful for it, it just made its communication so much easier rather than having to then speak on the phone i will always try and do things more that way or even if it's like video call i will probably avoid where i can doing things on the phone or just say to people like can we do a video call or even just um texting and messaging as well because I was born with a moderate hearing loss, I learned how to speak, I learned how to talk. However, just recently, I would say maybe this last year, something that I've reflected upon, just from when I do things like editing vlogs, when I edit my Soul Care Club videos, I recognize that I am not always pronouncing words correctly. And when I say them, it sounds like they're right, but then I recognize that I'm not fully maybe pronouncing certain sounds correctly. And so that's just something that I need to be more mindful of, that I speak a little bit slower <laughs> and just emphasize then words and syllables and sounds with more clarity. And yeah, that's, it's just something that I've then reflected that has started to change as I am getting older as well as making sure that you are facing somebody who has a hearing loss and making sure that they can clearly see your mouth so it gives them the opportunity to lip read so not only then be able to hear with more clarity but then the lip reading another thing is like body language as well so if you imagine that if you watched a video for example and put it on mute you would kind of be able to understand what they're talking about. You won't know word for word, but you kind of get an idea of the energy that they're trying to portray, that the, the feel that they're giving off. I am very expressive with my hands anyway, but you know, you can just tell by someone's facial expressions, by their body language as well, which is again something that really helps, you know, helps somebody who has a hearing loss just understand you that bit more. Other things that I would struggle with is if anybody is like this, over in their mouth, when they're talking. Um, or you know still like could be looking at you but they're not then showing their, their mouth so again just little things like that make a really big difference for somebody to be able to understand you and then have that conversation with you know I think everybody has a right to be seen to be to be heard and it goes both ways 
I mentioned earlier how I used to be able to get by without wearing my hearing aids. And when I used to go on holiday, if I'd be by the pool or, you know, be by the, by the beach, going in the sea or in the ocean, I would be able to get by. Like, you can't wear your hearing aids near, near water. They aren't waterproof. And so I would have to take them out. But I could get by. However, the last so many years, it's just something that I do struggle with. And it's it makes it makes an experience more challenging in a way i think i I, it's something that does make me feel sad and it's something that does then cause anxiety like because if my hearing aids got wet i they'd be broken i won't be able to hear and so i have to make sure that they're really protected and things and look after them and but then also in terms of like when obviously when you're in the water if you're swimming it's different but in terms of if you're going in the, you know, you're by the water or you're talking to friends or just talking to somebody, like, I then can't do that because I don't have my hearing aids in by the water. And I think, you know, it's even like if I, you know, when we go away, we, we used to like, you know, we'd have like surf lessons and things. And I, I just hugely struggle to be able to hear what anyone's saying. But then that's not to say that if, you know, again, like I, I tell people that I've not got my hearing aids in, so I'm really going to struggle. And they just speak a lot louder to me as well. Or it might be that I then get out of the water, make sure I'm dried off and put them in. I'm really hoping that as technology advances, that there is something that's like, you know, that they, they become waterproof. Or even like, I, I don't I don't care what a hat would look like. Anything that would then keep them waterproof, I would happily wear that. And yeah, it's just something that I've really noticed the difference with I think because like where I live I'm not near <laughs> I'm not near the water I'm not near uh, um, the ocean or the sea so it's only like when I've been away that I've really noticed that big difference in in my hearing loss because I've recently started swimming and then when I go swimming then I can't wear my hearing aids then and you know again like people try and talk to me um outside of when I've, I've finished swimming and I just really struggle to hear them, but I just say like I have a hearing loss. I um, I struggle to hear. Again, some people who are really people then sometimes just speak then a lot louder, and I'm so grateful to them for that. Something that I have journeyed through and done a lot of work around, I guess, is something that I've experienced multiple times. Something that I experienced just recently as well. It's when people make assumptions. This is people who don't know me, people who have made assumptions that I have ignored them and that I've been then rude because they think I've been ignorant when the truth is I just genuinely didn't hear them. And that could be because it's an environment that I've not got my hearing aid in, it could be hearing aids in, it could be then an environment where I it's been too noisy, it could be that they're too far away from me, it could be that they're talking to me to, behind me. And the, the the truth is I just haven't heard them but then people have then misread what they think is the truth and made an assumption that I am then ignoring them which then isn't isn't the case at all and it used to really upset me that people would think that about me like I wouldn't like you know I don't want someone to think that I am then rude or that I'm ignorant because it's not who I am and I would talk to anybody and I would never ignore anyone but I know that's true and I I can't do anything about what someone else then thinks. Like what people think is their own business. And do you know what? If if that they want to make that assumption about me before getting to know me, then that's on them. And since like I've kind of like surrendered to that a little bit more, found more acceptance around around it, and actually just mirrored it back, it's freed up a lot of energy, a lot of headspace. And so now if somebody like says like, oh, I thought you were just being rude and ignoring, I'm like, no, I have a hearing loss. I just genuinely didn't hear, hear you. Like I wouldn't do that. That's just what I say. And you know, that's, that, that's the truth of it. I thought I would just show you my hearing aids now. So my hearing aids just simply sit behind my ear. And then there's the little teeny tiny tube and then the little earpiece mold that sits inside my ear. So years ago when I was younger, I used to have like a full mold that would fit in and it would like, it would really start to ache after a while. These do, like I get ready for taking them out. If I'm, you know, I, I, I look forward to kind of taking them out at the end of the day because they they do just start to ache a little bit. And it just starts to, just like a bit of a, like a pressure pressing kind of sensation in your ear. Yeah, that goes in the, in, in the ear and then this just simply sits behind it. Now on the back of the, the hearing aid 
is the microphone and then there are different settings. So if you are in the noisy environment, there's like a button that you can click and it kind of changes the levels. However, I personally don't feel like it makes enough of a difference to, you know, really like hear people clearly. There is also then the other button that you can use when you're in places like, they've got, they've got the loop system. It's strange how that works, but basically, if you're say like if you're in a in a bank and then someone there's like a screen someone if they've got the loop on you can't hear anything else except for that person's voice so so clearly it's it blows my mind how it works like it, you could have so much noise behind you and it's like it just shuts it off completely and um, so yeah and I just have the two of them and they just sit behind my ear I change the batteries probably. Once a week, once a fortnight, that's how long they last for. So I just have to make sure that I then have them with me all the time because they can just go at any time. They usually get like a little beep noise and then they'll, they'll just go. So you don't get much warning. So I always need to make sure I have my hearing aid batteries with me at all times. My hearing aids are through the NHS, which I'm incredibly grateful for. Like my life would be so different without them. And, you know, for years and years, I... I've been wearing them and so I'm deeply grateful to the NHS for my hearing aids. I used to then be under the children's unit when I was younger, which the hearing test was so much more fun when you're younger, a lot more fun. And when you are under 18, you go every year. However, when you get to over 18, it's just very different. Like you kind of go when you need to go. I haven't been for a while, so I think it's something that I need to then book myself in for and get another hearing aid sorry, another hearing test done, because then they just tweak the hearing aids if, if they need to, which normally they do, like, because they will pick up on them what where the hearing loss has dropped and then just make those adjustments. So note to self, that's something I need to get myself booked in for. I'll show you what my hearing aids look like from the back. Like I mentioned, probably on my vlogs, you will see them quite a bit as well. And I will wear my hair up and things, and I don't style my hair so that it covers them, like... I really do not care that people see them at all. Like I said, many years ago when I was like a teenager, I did, but now I don't mind at all. So they, like I said, they they probably be blending quite well with like my hair colour. I don't know if you can see them now, but there they are as they just sit behind my ear on both sides. So there isn't anything that can be done yet for my type of hearing loss. I have just kind of always been told that my hearing will deteriorate as I get older. And it's something that I've just made peace with. It's something, like, I don't know any difference. Like, obviously I can tell that my hearing is worse than what it used to be, but it's, you know, I kind of think like, it's not like I know ever knew what it's like to hear completely and then that's been taken away from me it's very gradual as it does happen and I'm deeply grateful for the hearing that I do have and I'm incredibly grateful for all the technology that exists for me to be able to to connect with people and you know my life would be very different if I didn't have my hearing aids and you know so I am incredibly grateful to the people that continue to work on the technology uh, around, you know to support people with hearing losses I'm also incredibly grateful to the people around me in my life, my, my loved ones, my family, my friends. They are all incredibly supportive and, you know, I don't feel alone in it at all. And I, I then don't, so really when I think there isn't the need for me to be anxious around that because I am so supported as, as, my, as I go on in my journey, that support just continues to get bigger. And so, yeah, I am just full of gratitude. So, yeah, don't get me wrong. There are days like when I think, you know, what, what will happen to my hearing? Like, you know, I think it's it's important that, you know, I embrace those kind of feelings that, that do come up, but it they're not something that come up then too regularly. And like I say, I just then allow myself to feel those feels and then just ground myself back into the present moment of what I do know to be true. And that is that I am very supported and that I am deeply grateful. And thank you so much for watching this video about my hearing loss. And if you do have any questions that you'd like to ask me, if there's any way that I can 
support, then please just like pop them in the comments below or even just share this video with someone who you think might find it useful as well, whether, you know, whether this video reaches people who who do or don't have a hearing loss, then yeah, I just hope that then it's maybe raised some awareness and even just then maybe some inspiration as well. So yeah, I thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I look forward to hanging out with you in a, another vlog or even another chatty video. Bye-bye.